Every bacteria or virus invading our bodies has its own specific molecules called pathogen-associated molecular patterns, abbreviated as PAMPs. This PAMP molecule could be a polysaccharide, peptidoglycan, or even an RNA segment. On the other side, the phagocytic cells such as macrophages and dendritic cells have their own screening receptors for these PAMPs. These receptors are called toll-like receptors, abbreviated as TLRs. Once the PAMP molecule comes into direct contact with the toll-like receptor, it activates it. This activation of toll-like receptors results in a cascade of intracellular reactions, which end with the production of various numbers of immunological and inflammatory mediators. These mediators include interleukin-1, IL-1, tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNFA, interferons, histamine, prostaglandin, leukotrienes, and last but not least, nitric oxide, NO. These structurally different mediators trigger a wide range of immunological and inflammatory cascades. Now we will focus on the inflammatory reactions in response to the invaders. The inflammatory mediators produced by macrophages such as histamine, leukotriene, prostaglandins and nitric oxide produce significant changes in the blood vessels and surrounding nerves. They induce vasodilation, which gives rise to redness and heat, the two cardinal signs of inflammation. Additionally, these mediators increase the permeability of nearby blood vessels, which results in leakage of fluid and inflammatory cells to the site of infection. The resulting swelling is the third cardinal sign of inflammation. The inflammatory mediators also make the nerves more sensitive to pain, a state known as hyperplasia, which represents the fourth cardinal sign of inflammation. Now let's focus on one of the main innate immune system cellular reactions, which is phagocytosis. Firstly, the inflammatory mediators stimulate the endothelium to exhibit the adhesion molecules. Then, the neutrophils are attracted and come in contact with the active endothelial adhesive molecules. This contact results in activation of neutrophils. The active neutrophils are adhered to the endothelium. This is followed by sliding of the whole neutrophil cells through narrow endothelium gaps. This sliding transfers the whole neutrophils outside the blood vessels. Then, the extravascular neutrophils start to phagocytose the invading microbes. Then, they digest and degrade the invaders. It is important to know that the neutrophils are usually the first arrivals to the sites of microbe invasion. In fact, they are the predominant cells in pus. The neutrophils phagocytosis step is boosted by an invasion of huge amounts of other phagocytic cells, such as macrophages, dendritic cells, and B cells. These cells engulf and digest the invaders. Then, the phagocytes present some segments of the invading antigens on their cell surfaces. Therefore, they are called antigen-presenting cells, APCs. The digested microbial antigens are presented on the phagocytic cell membrane by the help of major histocompatibility complex molecules, abbreviated as MHC molecules. MHC molecules are glycoproteins that are encoded by polygenic and highly polymorphic MHC genes. In humans, 
MHC molecules are called human leukocytic antigens, abbreviated as HLA. In fact, the presenting of invaders' antigens on the HLA molecules of the APCs is one of the main bridges between the innate and adaptive immune systems. This video is narrated by Hassan Nawab, medical student at King's College London.